Barbed a tremendous four beatings from uh, Briscoe twice and from, and by physical beatings, I mean physical beatings, and Monzon. That's not calculated to increase his reflexes. He's also his age and the fact that Gil Clancy, the wonderful corner man, is not with him to inspire him and spur him on. He has great points, however. He has explosive punching power. And if there is a substitute for Gil Clancy, it's Emil Griffin, his idol who is in his corner and may spur him to win the title back. Angelo Dundee, Hugo Coro, of course, knows that Valdez has got to come after him early. Has he got enough to stop him? Well, Hugo Coro can stop him late rounds. He won't do it early. One thing he can't do is let his emotions take hold of him and try to please the fans. He's got to fight a smart, tactical fight early. If not, he'll be in trouble early. So what he's got to do is move the guy around and look after him to get him later. Not to fight with the guy. Box the guy. Outsmart the guy. The announcements are obviously in Spanish here in Argentina. There's the champion, Hugo Coro, 25 years of age, from Tunuyan, Mendoza province in Argentina. 159 and a quarter pounds he weighed in at this morning here in Buenos Aires. He holds both the WBA and WBC championships, one of only two championships, two champions to be the undisputed championship holder. And there is the challenger, Rodrigo Valdez, 32 years of age from Cartagena, Colombia, number one ranked by both the WBA and the WBC. He lost his title to Hugo Coro in an upset in April of 78 here on the CBS Sports Spectacular at San Remo, Italy. The referee tonight from South Africa, Stanley Christodoulou. Now, this has led to some controversy, which we will try and explain to you quickly. The World Boxing Council has refused to sanction this as a championship fight because the WBA appointed Stanley Christodoulou of South Africa as the referee. South Africa is not a member of the WBC. At the last fight involving both organizations, the Coral Harris fight, also here in Argentina, the WBC named the referee. And it was the WBA's turn this time. Argentina is a member of both world bodies, and the Argentine Boxing Federation has formally protested to the WBC about their lack of sanction. Now, what it means is that if Valdez wins tonight, he will not be recognized as the WBC champion, leaving Duran as the only undisputed champion in the world. If Coro wins, nothing will change, since the WBC is simply not recognizing this as a title fight. Meanwhile, Chris Tadulo, a very highly regarded referee, has worked eight championship fights. And we are underway in round number one with Rodrigo Valdez in white now on the right of your screen and the champion Hugo Coro in the black trunks to your left. Scheduled for 15 rounds. Bertie Pacheco mentioned that Gil Clancy is not here. Gil Clancy has become the boxing boss of Madison Square Garden in New York. And uh, this will be his last fight as a fight manager. He is still the manager of record, along with Melanie Oporto, co-manager of Rodrigo Valdez. But Clancy is not here for this fight, having other boxing duties, and he sent Emil Griffith down to work in the corner, along with the other handlers of Valdez. And while he's been one of the greatest champions of all times, he's not a Gil Clancy in the corner. It takes an awful lot of years and a lot of experience to be in the corner to inspire a fighter, to force him to fight. And that's what Rodrigo's going to need tonight. He's going to need to wake up and come get this young man. Something he didn't do in San Remo when he blew the title. And you were there, you saw it. Chino Govan, also in the corner of Rodrigo Valdez, along with the new face, Elias Leon, who has joined the Valdez camp recently. Coro so far is fighting him intelligently. He's moving away. He's very intense. He's keeping his eyes wide open. Every time Valdez makes a move, he slips away on him. And I know that Coro's wearing those rubber shoes. Valdez has got leather shoes on, which is not going to be any good for him. He's going to wind up slipping the neck. It's a very slick canvas here. It had been recently laundered. And in some earlier fights, we've noticed that it is quite slippery. Some of the other fighters had problems with it, those particularly wearing the leather bottom shoes. Coro's trainer is Diego Corrientes. His manager is Tito Lecturi. And so far he's fighting the fight. Coro's fighting the fight as program for him by his corner. Move around, circle, fight intelligently, pick your spots, fight a little bit, move a little bit, and keep uh, Valdez off balance. Valdez is already bleeding from the mouth. A couple of his punches must have cut his lip. His lower lip must seem to be cut. 
Approaching 30 seconds remaining in the first round. Scheduled for 15 from Buenos Aires. Valdez is fighting an exacting type of fight, trying to keep his balance. He's walking towards Coral. I don't think that's going to be the answer. He's going to have to step a little quicker, but Coral's just too quick for him. He's not doing anything, actually. He's just kind of standing there. It's just the kind of thing that Gil Clancy kept saying he's got to get off. He's got to get started in. Final seconds of round number one. This is round number two, Rodrigo Valdez on the left, now circling to the right. In the foreground is Hugo Carl, the champion. Took the title from Valdez in San Remo. Defended successfully against American Ronnie Harris in August of 1978 here on CBS. In his last fight, he won a non-title 10-round decision against American Willie Warren in Mendoza, Argentina. Mendoza is the hometown of Hugo Coro. And Hugo Coro is fooling everybody. He's the one who's doing the fighting to begin with. It's supposed to be he running away and Valdez doing the fighting. Scoring is by the referee and two judges. WBA rules applying. The 10-point must system. Nine points or less to the loser. There can be a 10-10 even round. Fighters wearing eight-ounce gloves, and it's a 19-foot square ring inside the ropes. Mandatory eight count in effect. Three knockdown rule will apply. That's up from Valdez. Coral countering as he does so well. Very effective. Very effective. Building up points, and uh, Valdez still asleep. Only thing, bad thing about that, Ferdy, when he's up there pitching, he can get nailed with a shot, and Valdez is the puncher. Valdez Corner told me he wants to get the first five rounds and let that go by and then start getting untracked with his kid. The opposite of what Coro thought they would do. But if you're going to throw away the first five rounds, that's a terrific disadvantage in the guy's hometown. Well, and Valdez is 32, Coro's 25. Well, that was the object of taking it easy the first five rounds. Good flurry in the middle of the ring, and we apologize uh, for the video problems we are experiencing. We're working on it for you. Less than a minute remaining in round two. Live from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Warm spring day here, and very warm inside the Luna Park Sports Arena. Valdez is trying to set up Cora for left hook, but Cora's got a way of slipping that left hook. He's very effective with it. Cora staggered Valdez. Again, I don't know if that was a stagger or an off-balance thing because he's come back. He looks all right. It is slippery. Seconds of round two. And this is what Valdez wanted. <laughs> round three from Buenos Aires. Tim Ryan, Ferdy Pacheco, and Angelo Dundee at ringside watching this world's middleweight championship. Hugo Coro, the champion, on the right of your screen in black trunks. Rodrigo Valdez of Colombia on the left. If I was Coro, I'd stay on the outside. I wouldn't trade like that anymore because he got nailed with a beauty right hand and got wobbled. Uh, Valdez was hurting himself at the end. But I didn't like the way Coro reacted to that right hand shot that Valdez hit him with. So he should box like he's doing, keep circling, and don't gamble. No reason for it. He actually, Angelo was fighting Valdez's fight. That's what Valdez wants to trade with this guy. Valdez can take the shot, but can Coro? After all, he's an explosive puncher. I'd hate to be trading with Valdez and come out even. Hugo Coro, 46 wins, two losses, one draw, 25 knockouts along the way in his favor. Valdez, 61, 7 and 2 with 40 knockouts. Everybody knows he can punch. I get that feeling Coro's trying to please. Now that's a mistake because he's never going to be as popular as a Monzon. Monzon is the greatest fighter to come out of Argentina. And it takes years to build up that kind of foul. He's just starting. He can't start at his career and be at the same as Monzon at the finish of his career. We're in round three, alerting our stations along the line. We'll be going to a station break at the end of this third round. But maybe he's getting confident, Angelo, because Valdez looked like he was fighting in slow motion in those two rounds. He's 
putting an awful lot of leather in there without getting anything in return. Valdez has a knack of blocking him, though, Ferdy. He's got his hands up there. He's slipping with him. That's a smart head in there. Less than a minute remaining, third round. Referee is Stanley Christodoulou. Well, it looks like Coro's best punch is a left hook, Ferdy. The right hand he slaps with it. Best punch is a left uppercut, left hook. Well, he's certainly been hitting with both hands in this one. Less than 30 seconds remaining in round three. Coral looks alive and fresh. Coral better not do that right uppercut again for it. He almost got nailed the right hand counter was a beauty. If it landed, he would have dumped him. Valdez definitely looking for that counter shot. We'll be back with more boxing action from Argentina after this word from your local station. This is round number four, scheduled for 15 for the middleweight championship of the world. The champion is now circling to the foreground, Hugo Coro in the black trunks. Rodrigo Valdez, the challenger and former champion. Referee's a great referee. He's very aware. The stool was left in the ring. He kicked it out. Uh, he's a good referee, and he stays out of the line of fire. Notice the way he don't block your pitcher. Stanley Christodoulou from Johannesburg, South Africa. We had a chance to chat with him, a delightful man and a real devoted boxing man. He worked the Luhan Davila championship fight on the Ali Spinks card in New Orleans not long ago. And Valdez has virtually made a present of the first three rounds. I can only think of that night that Louis Rodriguez gave a present of five rounds to Emil Griffin and then came storming back. Can this guy do the same thing, Angela? You never know in fights, but you don't bring back memories like that, Ferdy. You hurt my feelings. <laughs> it wasn't your fault. Lord knows you hollered yourself silly. Now, those things got to hurt. Those body shots that, that Coro's landing on the 32-year-old man. Ferdy, Coro's not a puncher. He's strictly an arm puncher. He's not a punishing puncher. He throws him in bunches, which takes effect in a later round. He's fighting a, a very clever fight. He punches and moves, punches and moves. There he is, there he is. One of the things our CBS colleague Gil Clancy told us is that uh, they were trying to get Valdez to prevent that, to be moving ahead, keep the target in front of him, keep Coro in front of him. Well, he succeeded in keeping him in front of him to his detriment. He's in front of him, but he's punching in front of him, and uh, Valdez is not. He has lacked fire so far, Valdez. Yes, he needs Gil to build a fire under the stool. We're in the fourth round. Valdez is looking for the big punch. You try it all night long, the big punch never comes. He's better off unloading some shots, go under and over, because you can't miss Coro's body, but you do miss him on top. Less than a minute remaining in round four. Tim Ryan with Ferdy Pacheco and Angelo Dundee, ringside at Luna Park in Buenos Aires, live on the CBS Sports Spectacular. Check the intensity on Coro's face. He's got his eyes wide open. I don't think he blinks. He's got his eyes wide open. He's looking for any, any kind of a move from Valdez. Very smart seconds. to do that. But Valdez cut, stays in front, cuts the distance, but then when he gets there, the other guy beats him to the punch, and they, and they move back to another set-piece battle. So he, he gets there, and he doesn't punch. Final seconds of the fourth round. We are back at ringside and there is Carlos Monzon with his beautiful lady friend and uh, Monzon, an authentic Argentinian hero. And he presents a very difficult image for all of the other outstanding fighters like Galindez and Coro, who have been champions or are champions. They've got a tough act to follow. The crowds really love Monzon. Very few people can come up with a movie star girlfriend. Like that. yeah, that's right. He got quite a reception when he came into the arena. Victor Galindez came in a rather a mixed reception. And of course, he's coming off his championship loss to Mike Rossman. This is round five. And long about here, 
Mr. Valdez better put, start putting things in gear. That's the time that his corner thought he'd start moving and start working. So let's see if it's true. Valdez in the white trunks on the right of your screen from Cartagena, Colombia. Coro from Mendoza, Argentina. Watching Valdez in the gym all week as I have against a sparring partner who looked and fought much like Coro. He did not throw punches as though he didn't want to give anything away with Coro supporters watching him. But he was not getting a lot of work done. Well, he certainly trained for this kind of fight, didn't he? He didn't throw in the gym and he's not throwing in the fight. Tim, gymnasium don't mean nothing if you're not in shape. I mean, you got to show it out here. This is where the nitty gritty is. I don't go by gymnasium. It's not a barometer. It's not a criterion. He looks in shape. He's trying to load up on every shot, which is the mistake. He's got to throw punches in bunches. He's not fighting happy. Uh, you know, he's not. He doesn't look like he's really roaring to, to get in there and mix it up. He just looks like he's trying to outthink the fella, and he's not doing it. Coro's fighting happy. Now, Griffith was unhappy with him not throwing more punches in training in the final days, though. It was a concern of Griffith's. But they have a kind of a divided camp without Clancy here. Now you have to remember Griffith was a punching machine. That, that man never got tired. It was 15 rounds of straight punching with Emil Griffith. No rest. He can't understand why other fighters can't do what he does. Fifth round. Carl's fighting the perfect fight, spinning in the middle. The place where he don't want to be is on the ropes, Bernie. That's a danger. But Valdez needs a stationary target. And he punches in bunches, as you said, Angelo. And that's what's good about this uh, fighter. He doesn't just let one punch out there, two, three, four combinations, while Valdez is looking for that one. Look at this. Less than a minute remaining in round five. Valdez on the right, Coral on the left. Valdez is definitely trying to throw a right uppercut counter when he throws that slapping right hand Coral. Less than 30 seconds remaining in the fifth round. But the last two right up because didn't have that much on him, Angel. If they landed, what was it, what's he going to do with it? Dangerous punch, Bertie. Don't need that much on it because the guy's bending into it. All you got to do is time it. If the shot gets in, it's effective. Well, he's certainly got the experience and he's certainly a great puncher, so let's see if that comes true. Final seconds of the fifth round. There it is. Little inside right uppercut. Well, this man, Amy O. Griffith. And look he at him. is in the corner somewhat anxious, I would think. He has been concerned this past week, and uh, he must be now. It is round six coming up. And a great feeling of frustration. When you're a fighter and working in the corner like that, and you know what you could be doing, and you know what you have done for so many years, and you see that your man can't do it, it's a great feeling of frustration. It's different than a corner man like Gil, who just, or Angelo, who could come in and inspire the fighter to go do what he wants him to do. The problem is there's no coordination in the corner. That's the worst thing for the fighter. The fighter's on his own because he's got a little guy in there, I don't know, named Leon, who's a buddy of his, who's giving him instruction. And it's really disconcerting so the guys in the corner could try to help the fighter. No question, the corner is very important. Toro's got the same corner man he's always had. Diego Corrientes, Patricio Ruscio, and Juan Padrero. And they're a competent Argentine corner with many, many, many years of boxing experience between them. Round number six. looking for the counter never got off because Valdez couldn't get the shot off he was too quick for Valdez Argentina fight fans are real great when Coral grabbed Valdez around the head they didn't like it they whistled at him now there's hardly been a clinch. And Coro's been working like a demon. Valdez has yet to land a good combination. He's just not been able to put anything together in the way of an attack. 
Minute remaining in round six. And as you said, Gills taught him to be in front of him. He's in front of him. But it's not doing him any good. Moro dancing with more confidence as the fight advances. Valdez is trying to intimidate them, stop working. Coral's sticking to his battle plan. He's smart doing what he's doing. About 20 seconds remaining in round six. That was a good punch. It was right at the belt level. That was legit. Final seconds. Round six. Round number seven, Luna Park, Palacio de Sparta, Buenos Aires, Argentina. And I feel Valdez is going to pick up the action here. He almost started at the end of the last round. At least a lot more movement, a lot more spontaneity, a lot more joy in his fighting. I, I think he's going to have to come out and do something here uh, dramatic to take the play away from Coral. Like score a knockout, Ferdy. Because he's not going to do it. He's six rounds behind right now. That he hasn't won a round. And this kid, Coro, is fighting a, a planned fight. He's going to have to knock this kid's plan out of kilter by taking it to him and really loading up on shots, but putting them together. That would be dramatic enough if we could have a little knockdown. He can't seem to get the distance, Angelo. He can't move in close enough. Well, Coro's offsetting him. He's grabbing him around the head for it. He's grabbing him around the shoulder. That's youth. He has the balance to do it with. Valdez gets knocked off balance very easily. Would you say that's because of his age and uh, diminishing reflexes? Well, no, he's never had great balance as a fighter, but he always ha had the, the knack of getting in there and letting his shots go. He can't get him off tonight. Well, for a very good reason, because Coro is fighting a very intelligent and uh, moving, slugging guy. Brought the crowd alive. Carl caught Valdez coming in. And Carl's throwing some hard leather now. No longer is he throwing those tentative little shots and putting them together. He threw a few bombs just then. There's another one. Seventh round, I get the impression Carl's fighting with more confidence as each minute of the fight goes by, as though he's convinced he's the better man. Well, it only help him. Is, certainly is up to this point. Less than a minute remaining. Round seven. Valdez has got to come in double step for it. He's taking one step and throwing a punch. He's not going to hit this kid, though. This kid bounces out. And his quickness is what's saving him from getting hit the counter. He's going to have to get rough with this kid. He's going to have to really come in and fight him. Less than 30 seconds remaining. Round seven. Schedule for 15. He's going to have to try to make it a street fight. Slipping, like you said. Hmm, low punch. Final seconds. And at the end of this round, let's return to Dick Stockton at our studios in New York. Round number eight, Luna Park Sports Arena in Buenos Aires, Argentina, the World Middleweight Championship. The defending champion is on the right of your screen, circling in black trunks, Hugo Coro against Rodrigo Valdez, the former champ. Tim, I don't know how you got it scored, but I got the Coro pitching the shutout so far. He's won seven out of seven rounds. Hard to come back from that kind of a lead. He has just not been aggressive enough or offensive enough. The best shot there landed to the head of the referee, Stanley Christodoulou of Johannesburg, South Africa. He takes a good punch. Stanley takes a good rap. He does. All right. He okay. does. Former fighter himself. Well, I'm certainly happy uh, for Gil Clancy's blood pressure. He's not in the corner because at this point, Gil would be building a fire over there. He would really be screaming and hollering. And I can't blame him. Something's got to wake this kid up. Hugo Coro, the middleweight champion. Two famous heavyweight champions 
in the news this week. Of course, the sad loss of Gene Tunney last Tuesday night at the age of 80. First undefeated heavyweight champion in history. Retired in 1928 after beating Jack Denson twice. And a tremendous gentleman and a credit to, to boxing. The other champion, Joe Lewis, testimonial dinner for him on Thursday night in Las Vegas. 1,500 guests turned out to help with his medical expenses, including Muhammad Ali, Larry Holmes, many more great fighters and celebrities. We send our best to Joe Lewis. I think you could fill up Yankee Stadium for Joe. He's a much beloved man. Congratulations to Larry Holmes for his victory last night over Alfredo Evangelista. And Kenny Norton didn't do bad either, I understand. This will be eight rounds, scheduled for 15, and we have less than a minute remaining. Coro has been in command. There's a young man in Boston fighting tonight that must be watching this fight because he's the next opponent if he wins. Antifermo. Bob Arum has said that if he wins tonight, he gets a shot at the winner of this fight. Marvin Hagler might want to get a bid in, too, I would think, if he wins his fight, his fight tonight. Well, I think Anna has got the seniority on him. That is the best flurry thrown by Valdez yet. Round eight. He didn't land much, but he threw a bunch of punches. And at least he got him close to throwing. That looked a little bit like the old Valdez. It's like the juice is starting to flow again in Valdez. So it looks like it's going to be better from here on out. It couldn't be worse. Final seconds of the eighth round. The left hook. There is the former WBA light heavyweight champion Victor Galindez from Argentina. Along with Monzon, an interested spectator, no doubt uh, pulling for his fellow countryman, Foro. Galindez says he is not retiring. Indeed, expecting a rematch against Mike Rossman. We're in round nine. World middleweight championship. Valdez on the left. Coro, the champion on the right. Commission's having a fit about that Leon getting out of the ring so late. And so uh, Stan's been going over there trying to get him out of there. That's because they don't seem to have a 10-second warning bell. They need that badly. Elias Leon, a newcomer to the Valdez camp, and seemed uh, to be the man in control during the last week of training. Rather strange sessions in which Emil Griffith stood on one side of the ring and Leon on the other. Can't help but feel that uh, there's been some effect on Valdez's performance. Tim, I don't think so. The Valdez loves Emil Griffith, always respected him. That's why he's here. But I think Gil felt the guilt that Emil can get the best out of him. Well, so far, no I haven't said anything. No question about that. I just My point is that I don't think Emil was able to get the best out of right. Valdez, and we haven't seen much of anything yet. Emil hasn't been close to him. That other man's doing a complete talk, which may be what uh, Valdez wants. If it works, it works. Coro, meanwhile, doing his job, his way, and doing it effectively. We're in the ninth round. It's a low blow, but very, very uh, conjectural. It's right up at the right at the belt line. Stanley Christodoulou from Johannesburg, South Africa, the referee. He and two judges do the scoring. He hit him right in the walking billboard. <laughs> He's got more signs on him than uh, U.S. men. That's uh, above the F.B. Judges, by the way, are Roberto Kill from Panama and Roberto Vecino from Uruguay. He should stay there. She was doing all right inside, then he moves away. Rodrigo hoped the guy would stand still, but this kid don't want to fight Rodrigo's fight. He's going to fight his fight, and that's the best way to lick Rodrigo Valdez. He's certainly doing it, Angelo. Less than 30 seconds remaining in round nine. Angie, if you were in Valdez's corner, what would your advice be when he comes back? You can't say it over the air. <laughs> I, would I, would, I would tell the guy to jump all over him, let everything go, because you're not going to win nothing this way. He's the challenger, and he's not throwing any punches. He's got to win the title. If I were the fighter and Angelo was in my corner, I'd go to a neutral corner. I wouldn't come back to the corner after one of these runs. 
Final seconds of round nine. A warning for Coro for butting from the referee. Round number 10, the World's Middleweight Championship. Hugo Coro on the right of your screen. Rodrigo Valdez, a former champion, now the challenger. Now circling to the right and white. Tim Ryan with Bertie Pacheco and Angelo Dundee. Live from ringside in Buenos Aires on the CBS Sports Spectacular. Bertie, uh, look at Cabral's shoulders. It looked like at one time it was dislocated like it's a big lump yes. on the left shoulder. Could look like it was dislocated at one time, right? Yeah. Yeah. It looked like he was wearing shoulder pads when I first saw him with his robe on. Yeah, it certainly didn't bother him, though. He's like Bert Jones. He keeps throwing those home runs. Hugo Coro. And again, Valdez, a picture of frustration. Uh, uh, it's really almost indescribable. Uh, uh, he just doesn't seem to have the answer, and he's got five more rounds to uh, endure this punishment. Bad. This isn't a tag team thing, and Griffin couldn't jump in and finish the last five rounds. I would imagine Amo would like to do it right about now. Amo with those shoulders, going to look like a fighter till he's 80. By the way, he told me during the week he has no plans for comeback. Thank heaven for that. <laughs> oh, a great shot. shot. Valdez with a left hook. Finally landed a good shot on Coral going back. With no visible effect. I'd like to alert our stations along the line. We'll be going to a station break after this round. We're in round number 10. Better start landing some more of those shots, Bertie. It's going to be a... I don't think you're going to make the whole 15 rounds because he's just not doing nothing. And he's got to win by a knockout. You and I both know that. He's, he's so far behind now, he's not even a point of keeping score now. Less than a minute remaining in round 10. Valdez won the WBC title in May of 1974, knocking out Benny Briscoe. Defended successfully four times, then lost to Carlos Monzon twice for the combined title. Won that vacant title in 1977 against Benny Briscoe. Lost to Coro in April of 78. And I think he bought, actually, I think he fought a better fight when he lost than this one. This one seems to be almost a shutout. Some 30 seconds remaining in the 10th round. Coro, a very difficult fighter and uh, strong. Final seconds. The 10th round. We'll be back with more boxing action from Argentina. This is round 11 from Buenos Aires, Argentina. The champion on the left is Hugo Coro, is fighting a very strong, persistent fight in the Coro style. Valdez in the white trunks, now to the right of your screen. And Valdez gave an eloquent shrug and a raise of the eyebrows when he caught my eye looking at him in the corner as if to say, what else can I do? I don't know what else to do. Coro grabbed him around the head and sort of said, well, what am I going to do? I'm just hailing this guy. I'm going to try to get away with everything. And that's what he grabbed him around the head, which is a foul. I'll say one thing, he's not overly exhausted. He certainly has not exerted himself, the, and the, uh, the blows at Coro's land are not such punishment that he's tired so that his punches aren't effective. He can still land that crunch. This thing is far from over, but uh, he can't get close enough to do it. I don't think he has a crunch left in the box, Bertie. I think it's not there anymore. He's used to seeing a great fighting machine. He just can't get it in there. So it's one at a time. He can't get the other one off. Oh, would you say this is the end for Rodrigo Valdez, Angelo? Looks like the, the, mar the marking of time, Ferdy. You hate to see it come to great fighters. Rodrigo was a great fighter, but it's not there. He just can't get his punches off. That's right. There comes a night when they're no longer what they used to be. And it certainly looks like it's that night for Rodrigo Valdez. Interesting thing, the fans are getting on Coro because they want Coro to see him try to put him away. Take the take of the aggression 
be the man in there because he is the champion. But Cole's got to fight like he's fighting. He can't listen to the fan. Less than a minute remaining in round 11. Now you made that point at the beginning of the program, Angelo, and that's the way he fights. He is the champion. He won with it. He's defended successfully against Harris with it. I doubt that he'll change. He is a very intelligent young man. There was a fighter of one of the worst styles in the world, Gene Fulmer, but look how long he kept the championship. Everybody booed him, everybody was bored by it, but he just kept winning and beating good fighters. Gene was a tremendous fighter. He never let the public change his style. Less than 30 seconds in round 11. I know that Ronnie Harris is back home looking and saying, now how the heck did this guy lick me? I should have won the title. <laughs> Doing the same thing. 25-year-old Hugo Coro comes out against Rodrigo Valdez in round 12 of this championship fight. Coro married. Wife Beatrice here. He has two children. Won this Argentinian title back in 76. Beating Marcello Quinones of Peru. Got on to win the world title and defending it well at this moment. You can't ask more of a world champion than to take every round, and that's just about what he's done. And yet the crowd whistled uh, again between rounds. The crowd's very unhappy. I mean, they're, they want to see him really go do, handle him like a champion. He's handling him, but not like a champion. He should be doing a number on Valdez. He's right there for him. Load up on the guy, do his thing. Yeah, but then he runs the risk of getting hit, Angelo, and he's got that title securely in the bank of Argentina right now. Bertie, he's got to live in Argentina. You and I don't. Yeah. The world loves the winner. Look at the way they hooted Victor Galindez. He only lost one fight in about eight years. They hooted him when he came in here today. One fight. Valdez rallying some here in the 12th. He's coming. He's coming and trying. He looks tired to me. Yes. Valdez is studying the clock. He's very tired. Would you believe I got clock watches in my gymnasium? They yeah. watch that clock. Make sure <laughs> they get the last 10 seconds in. That's what they want to see. Rallies. One of the few flurries in the fight. Valdez doing his best to get something going here. He's got to win by a knockout. We're in the 12th round with one minute remaining in that round. A little less. He just can't fa fault uh, Coro. Everything he's done has worked for him. Bertie Pacheco, Angelo Dundee with Tim Ryan at ringside, live on the CBS Sports Spectacular. World Middleweight Championship action. He's doing a lot of clock watching. <laughs> oh yeah, he's, a, he's checking that clock every chance he gets. Less than 30 seconds remaining, round 12. And Rodrigo ought to give it his all for at least 30 seconds. Take his chance. Oh, well, we'll give it to him. Fans are gonna get on him again, Ferdy. They don't like it. Final seconds of the 12th round. <laughs> round 13, Hugo Coral bidding to retain his undisputed middleweight championship. If he wins, he'll hang on to both the WBA and WBC titles. He was well ahead on our cards here in round 13. I don't think anybody else would see it differently. I don't think it's mathematically possible for him to catch up anyway but a knockout. And it's been that way since about the seventh round. Valdez come out of his corner, loaded, loaded for, with grease, looked like he wanted to swim the channel. Stanley wiped it off and, you know, and made sure that it wasn't on there. You're not supposed to put too much grease on the final state. Stanley Chris Dulu. Referee is from Johannesburg, South Africa. He's a good one, Tim. I really enjoy his work, the way he moves around, stay out of the way of the fighters. 
Fans whistling, they want more action and they want more and demand more from their champion, Hugo Coro. All he's doing is winning, that's not enough for them. All he's doing is winning convincingly, and it's not enough for him. Argentinian fans are used to those kind of wild, devil-may-care fighters that come boring at you from bell to bell looking for a knockout. But the point of fact, Monzon wasn't that way. Monzon was cautious, and he waited, he waited, he waited until the opening, and then he lowered that big boom on him. But he had the big bomb. That was a thing. Ah, but he has the punch. This that guy hasn't got thing. the punch. Well, they are still riding a high here from their World Cup soccer championship in Argentina. So they want to win everything and look good doing it. You can't blame them. That was a beauty that Coro just threw. He threw a left hook and a left foot. But a beautiful combination. Under a minute remaining in round 13. Left foot to the ankle. It was a beautiful punch. Remind you now the... watch when he throws a left hook. He'll come with his body English and hit him with his left, his left foot on his, on, his other, on his right leg. Reminds you the Anoki Ali fight. hard now. Coro is punching very hard. Under 30 seconds remaining. 13th round. Valdez pressing a little more, but Coro coming at him. A little bit more pressing, a little bit more beating. Final seconds, round 13. Round 14, Tim Ryan with Angelo Dundee and Ferdy Pacheco here in Buenos Aires, where the champion Hugo Coro has been in command throughout. Chino Govin in the corner that last round tried to do a pro. He tried to get some humor in the corner. He had Valdez laughing. I hope something works because he's got to go all out. There's no shot in there. He's just walking around. Done the same thing early. He hasn't changed the format. Apparently he hasn't got anybody in his corner to tell him how to change it, Angelo. Or he can't carry out the instructions. Just a split second too late for him. I mean, it breaks your heart to see a great fighting machine like a Rodrigo Valdez not be able to get his punches together. But that's the sign. A sign to say, hey, goodbye. He was an outstanding champion, and it may indeed be that it wouldn't have mattered who was there tonight in the corner. He just has not been able to deliver, and Coro has fought an outstanding fight. So it made no bones about it. He's given 100%, but there's nothing inside. He's just trying to do it, but there's nothing there. A fight like this goes a long way in convincing a fighter, a fighter that it's all over, because... A fighter with the kind of pride he is feels humiliated that he cannot do anything better than pitch a shutout. And make no bones shot. about it. If there was a slower fighter in there, Valdez would get to him. But Coro's quick. He's alert. He's young. He don't go for nothing. He's smart, smart fighter. And he's young. He's a lot of fighters. He's going to lick a lot of fighters. He and Anna Fermo ought to be some kind of battle. Anna Fermo stands right in the middle of the corner and comes to get you. Right in the middle of the ring. Valdez still working, but Coro battles back. Bertie, I feel Marvin Hagler deserves a shot. He's the best middleweight around today. That's the guy that deserves a shot. Antifermal, great. But I think it, Hagler is the outstanding middleweight. Well, maybe it's a question of seniority, as we said at the top of the show. Antifermal's been around so long, he deserves to at least have his one crack at it. Less than a minute remaining in round 14. He still has to get by his fighter tonight. Valdez stocking, but just unable to get enough together. He's very popular here. He's really time. stalking now. Signing autographs, having his pictures taken, very gracious. With a wonderful natural smile, and the Argentinian fans like him here. You know, Valdez is fighting a lot more like he should have from the opening round, trying to cut him off, trying to throw punches, pressing, pressing. He's not getting him much more, but it might have had he started earlier. Final seconds of round 14. And 
so he has one more round left I'm sure he'll be giving it his all he's never done less than that and if he's going to win he's going to have to take four oh off well Chino Govin has given him his final instructions and of course Chino we talk a lot about the corner but Chino Govin is a good competent corner man and he's done the best he can final round the world middleweight championship Val Valdez went after him Valdez in white he just joined us along the way Wonder what it feels like to know you might be fighting the last round of the last fight of your long professional career. He's been a, he's been a great pro for 16 years. I know what that might feel like. He has fought for this title four times, defended it successfully four times. I tell you, if I was Toro, I'd fight this way I'm fighting right now. What's the sense in gambling now? It's the 15th round. Absolutely. From his standpoint, he's fought a perfect fight. He's gotten hit very little and he's hit a lot. I don't think as good a punch as Coral takes. <laughs> this is the 15th and final round. You go, Coral, en route. You're defending the championship. some of the crowd in appreciation of Coral's effort. They know he's a winner and uh, they start to chant and sing. But it's tough to get mixed reviews when you're defending your championship in your own hometown. And with it? a shutout. If he even had a split decision, they might boo him. But he's pitching a shutout. Oh, he got hit. I tell you, he's a well-conditioned fighter, for it. He's got plenty of bounce to the ounce. That's huge. That's what? stamina. Angela, I'll tell you, every time I've watched him, he's gotten better and better. I mean, he wasn't this good with Harris. Or else Harris was giving him so much uh, junk and jive that he couldn't look that good. Well, one thing you have to remember is he was an unknown fighter when he won this title. He had a number five ranking that I don't think was deserved on who he had beaten at that point. And he beat Valdez for that title in San Remo and has really not had that many uh, significant fights. Well, he's going to get into significant territory now, and he's going to get into very significant territory. He fights Marvin Hagler and Anna Firm on that guy. Because Hagler is some kind of monster. Less than 30 seconds left in the fight. Carl is still moving so well. He is hard to hit. Can't say it often enough. Valdez stocking, stocking, trying to get close. So there's nothing there, Tim. Final second. There's the bell. It's all over. And the crowd, some of them, coming to their feet to acknowledge their defending champion. An outstanding performance by Hugo Coro, a disappointed Rodrigo Valdez in what may be his last fight. He had indicated even during the last week that he might call it a day after this fight. No question. All right, there's the... Unanimous decision to Hugo Carl being lifted up 